there was a rocket shot above the Kiev and uh, half of the rocket missile went to the next building of one of my cafes. So it's, uh, I don't know, 20 meters away because it's a big uh, building and it hit the last floor. It didn't explode. It just, you know, uh, it destroyed the wall. And but the rest of this, uh, the other piece of this rocket hit the five uh, five stored building, just I would say 500 meters away from there, and uh, it killed some people and uh, it destroyed uh, almost all the building, and uh, and it's scary, you know, scary for for people. But uh, you know, it happened uh, a week ago, and uh, it happens so often. It happens uh, almost every week that you know people die, and that we are just uh, we don't talk about this anymore. So you can see some houses are out of electricity. So if there is a light, uh, there are probably either candles or the LED light that was uh, powered by the power bank, whatever. So there is no street lights at all for more than a month. So as you can see in this district, there are lights, but also no, no, no street lights at all. I'm in Kiev now, uh, capital of Ukraine. I'm at one of my cafes that I own. It's on the left bank of the river Dnipro. And uh, just recently, maybe half an hour ago, uh, we got the light, we got the electricity, and it's been uh, 29 hours without any electricity over here in this district. We are experiencing new reality without electricity. Last time when electrical station close to Kiev was destroyed, it was a few days ago, 80% of the electricity of the capital was out. Military things uh, were harmed, only electricity and uh, some uh, um, structures which are usually used by the electricity network. That proves that, that the target, the main target is our uh, civil life. They want to freeze us out and make us and like make blackout here. So that is obviously what what is the, the, the main goal. But uh, with managed to, to live on, managed to continue our ordinary life. We have regular switching of uh, the electricity because of the shortage of the power in the joint uh, electric system of Ukraine. So now we are out of electricity and I'm going to the parking spot. 12 hours we don't have electricity, 12 hours we have electricity. And it's everywhere in Kyiv and I would say almost everywhere in, in, in Ukraine. So it's four, then four hours we have, then four hours no. We don't have the city lights because we saved the electricity and the, all the city lights in, in the whole Ukraine are switched off. So how my life has changed? Uh, uh, First of all, here I don't have my own apartment. And so now I, I live in, in the hostel uh, with my mom and my granny. So we share one room. And uh, you know that after the last bombs, uh, the country had a blackout. I think it was uh, the worst blackout uh, from the very beginning of the war. The last couple of days, uh, I'm, I feel myself like a caveman. The world mm, didn't see the war like this before. It's massive attacks on energy infrastructures and the it. While the mobilization of the troops uh, here in this war 
doesn't mean a lot because it's artillery. It's artillery, rockets, and so on. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, another type of war. I managed to get the generator, uh, these diesel ones. Our heating system in our house, for example, is from electricity, so the only way is to buy a generator. The middle temperature, in, for example, in the house uh, has uh, dropped uh, by four degrees, I can say. What I personally did, I made a, a kind of a stock of uh, the drinking water, of some products which can be eaten without any cooking. And uh, I bought more of the power banks to, to at least uh, have the possibility to uh, recharge uh, the appliances. We have events, but they're quite rare and they're usually held in underground premises to make sure people would, would not need to leave if the shelling starts. It's rather difficult now to provide uh, online options and offline options for kids and for teachers because uh, offline is cancelled uh, every time when the um, bomb shelling is uh, and uh, online is cancelled because we don't have electricity. It's really very hard to provide your usual work um, without electricity, of course. Uh, it, we can tell this about uh, every sphere. Imagine that you don't have electricity <laughs> for two days and imagine how it will be influenced on Europe. <laughs> so really, it's uh, Russia is a country, it's a terrorist. And uh, coming back to the question of uh, economy and unemployment rate, um, yes, it's high. It's uh, it's you know, but basically it's it's obvious because we have war in the country. A lot of people uh, lost their job, and of course, uh, even old prices uh, they are very difficult for them to pay now. For example, certain amount of of of, of money that the people had earned uh, per month. Uh, due to the inflation, it, 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 it got uh, 40% less. We have, yeah, we have new prices on generators. <laughs> uh, they are like uh, four or three times bigger than uh, before this attack. People who import them uh, from other countries, uh, of course, uh, and they understand that uh, everybody needs them now. They try to make money on it. <laughs> Accompanied with the uh, increase of the prices to the fuel, because Russians had hit our fuel system as well, and they had to adapt, and this causes also the, the raise. In Kharkiv, our major, uh, he um, fixed uh, the prices um, on the most important uh, goods, uh, so that uh, our shops uh, and supermarkets uh, they can't uh, hide them uh, as they want. Obviously, there is no investment, there is no development. Many of these businesses are, uh, are deprived of their living, of their working in the cities where they have worked. I mean Kharkiv, I mean Mariupol, I mean Kherson. We are not talking about uh, earning a lot of money. Now we are talking about winning the war. And then after, the, after we win the war, then we will talk about uh, the, the rise of the economy? Well, uh, the most um, big change in the life is that my family is not with me. They, uh, my children left immediately before the start of the invasion and uh, uh, they never returned to Kiev and they uh, went to school at the place where they are at the moment. Uh, so I'm visiting them from time to time and return back to Kyiv. A lot of people have moved out of from Ukraine. A lot of people uh, has uh, moved from the occupied cities. 
and uh, from the cities that are under attacks like like Kharkov. Some people have moved to the western part of Ukraine. In uh, Kharkiv, uh, more than 70% of schools are damaged or destroyed absolutely. So we decided to move uh, here because I wanted my kids uh, to go offline uh, in kindergarten and in school. So I'm from educational spheres. Uh, I know a lot of uh, schools uh, where both principals and teachers and kids, uh, they have to sit in bomb shelters for five and six hours. And uh, in the same time, they don't have even electricity to I hid these bomb shelters and to be like uh, they, are, they are sitting in the dark. My sister came here, uh, my cousin, with her husband and their daughter and, and her grandmother. So they are all here. They are living safe. They have water. They have electricity. They, my niece can go to school. So they uh, used to live in Bakhmut, which is a city, a town in uh, the Donetsk region. It was always part of Ukraine. I mean, from the very beginning of the war, it was never uh, then there. At the moment, Bakhmut is uh, the city where the zero point is. So uh, the situation there is quite hard for about one and a half or two months already. We have refugees in almost every region now in Ukraine, in even in Kharkiv, because, for example, in Kharkiv, there are refugees from Donetsk and Luhansk um, uh, regions. Uh, so we are like already uh, got used to communicate with other refugees, to, to know that you are a refugee. Well, obviously, it is one of the social problems are among the most uh, hard ones, because we have a very big part of Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian population who left the country. I was uh, thinking about uh, the, uh, about um, going abroad, but uh, really I know that uh, <laughs> uh, in Ukraine we are at home, even in such uh, situation. Щодо мови, по-перше, я маю зробити комплімент вашій українській мові. З кожним разом я все більше і більше е, тішуся з тим, як ви говорите українською. Це правда дуже класно звучить, особливо враховуючи, що ви говорили все життя російською. І, власне, за це, е, ви ж розумієте, я вас буду зараз запитувати про штраф 3400 гривень, який, власне, постанова від уповноваженого захисту державної мови. Як ви можете прокоментувати цю історію? Вот специально перейду на русский язык э, и скажу, что э, я, я считаю, что сегодня у нас есть э, совершенно другие дела. И я считаю, что сегодня для нас самое главное – это победа, независимо от какой мовы разговариваем мы о том или ином месте Украины. Тому, а уже ж официально буду разговаривать на украинской мове, а что до стосується моего спілкування с харків'янами, я буду спілкуватися на русском языке, потому что это язык, на котором 80% харьковчан сегодня говорят, и тут надо быть очень аккуратным, осторожным в, знаете, в языковом вопросе, бо в сада намагал, намагались нас разделить этим языком. В сада у разные моменты истории Украины нас делили. Я тоже не хочу щоб нас делили, і тому е, я впевнений, що е, це таке важливе питання. Не потрібно нас ділити, хто розмовляє, розмовляє на українському язикі, і ті, які говорять на русском язикі. Ми усі українці. Yesterday, as I know, the mayor of Kharkiv, he was uh, fined. It was a symbolic fine, like 30 dollars. But he held the speech, official speech, uh, to the citizens of uh, Kharkiv in Russia. So I guess it has to be done much, much early and not only to him. Our major really, unfortunately, doesn't know Ukrainian. But um, it doesn't mean that he is not a patriot of Ukraine or of, uh, of our city. 
this uh, all these uh, nine months uh, showed that uh, Kharkiv always is one of the first who uh, restores uh, all this all the damages and really he uh, has no thoughts about uh, like um, I don't know negotiations with Russians mm-hmm. now uh, difficult issue now in Ukraine uh, because really uh, according to this uh, p- policy of uh, deukrainization uh, that was uh, Russia provided for four centuries uh, on our part of Ukraine Taras Krimin uh, he's responsible uh, for defense uh, Ukrainian language in Ukraine he really has uh, enough uh, like strengths to really find uh, our major, that he doesn't speak uh, U- Ukrainian in a national t- TV marathon. If you're a public person, if you, in particular, are a major of Ukrainian city uh, during the war, you need to speak Ukrainian. Of course, nobody will uh, check uh, on what language uh, do you speak in your family. It can be like, I don't know, Hungarian, Chinese, uh, Japanese, I, I don't know, English. Uh, what do you want? Those who, all those who live in Ukraine, they are Ukrainians. Both those who speak Ukrainian, those who speak Russian, and those who, who speak Tatarian, for example. All of them are Ukrainians. But at the same time, there is a difference, of course. As to the language, uh, many of those who I know started speaking Ukrainian in their everyday life after the full-scale invasion began. So uh, people are moving themselves from that culture because they see what the what the Russians do. We build our own identity because if you don't build uh, your own identity, uh, it's going to be built by someone else. Of course, it's uh, not to be pleasant uh, for others, but it's our identity. It's our house. It's a big uh, like uh, mistake uh, of Russia that uh, they thought that uh, that we, we have a lot of people who are speaking Russian. Uh, we want to be Russians, uh, or we want to be a part of Russia. It's uh, really one of the greatest mistakes. <laughs> I lived in uh, in Dnipro before the war. And so all my life, all my job is here in Dnipro. And so I went to Melitopol just to take my parents from that place. Yeah. I was in my native um, town. It was the place uh, I, I knew and... Uh, no, I, I know each place, uh, each corner. Жители Мелитополя. Военно-гражданская администрация Запорожской области внимательно следит за развитием ситуации в городе. Просим вас сохранять спокойствие и не принимать участие в массовых мероприятиях. I went to different demonstration against Russian occupiers. Everything was peaceful until the last day when uh, when they uh, occupied uh, the Ukrainian center and uh, our mayor was taken by them. And uh, at that point, I understood that it's not safe. And so I uh, joined this group. They shared all the information about the situation. So one morning we organized um, in a like a little column uh, of uh, ten cars. It was a civilians, just civilians, and uh, we took our way to the Parisian. Zaporizhia is uh, the first big city on the way to uh, Ukrainian territory. It wasn't like uh, a long distance, 
yeah, 140 kilometers. Yeah, but uh, that time uh, it took us nine hours, nine hours, because there there were a lot of checkpoints with Russians, and uh, at, at each check checkpoint they uh, they check all uh, my body if whether I have any tattoo or not. They checked uh, our cell phones. They were searching, I think, for some Ukrainian, you know, stuff like news or something maybe forbidden. I don't, I don't know what is that, but yeah. First of all, I'm in the Kharkiv region, quite close to Russia. And here the situation is uh, quite stable. Of course, we uh, make artillery attacks and also grad attacks and also mines. They uh, continue to, to fire against uh, civilians and injured civilians. But uh, the situation here is quite stable. So we have to protect this uh, ways, this uh, villages way, because you know, in uh, February or March, Russians came very easily. They occupied the territory because nobody was here. It was it was empty. You just have to like take tank, push gas, and go. Uh, when I saw ammunition of the uh, Russian soldier, it was like Second World War. Which uh, changed about to 15 places or even 16, 16 positions in different places. A lot of time we've been in uh, Donetsk region and uh, I was injured uh, on the beginning of July. I was injured, meanwhile I rescued uh, my brother in arm who was injured before by the rocket. And uh, I was injured by another rocket. I was in hospital for five days. Everything is okay, but I still, in some parts of me, a small piece of Russia. So, like from Russia as well, so I have Russian love inside me. Yes, contact. Yes, blaradie, my hate suku. Wow, country text was were very successful. We liberated uh, more territory that uh, Russian uh, occupied. They just ran away. Uh, when we crossed the river of Siversky Donetsk, and when it was big counterattack in uh, Harvey, we've been one of the first units that crossed the river on the boat. <laughs> So right now the situation is quite difficult uh, in Bakhmut and the Divka. They want to conquest these territories, these uh, cities, since 2014. So already eight years they're gonna take these cities under control. Mr. Maybe only one answer: последовательная борьба за свои национальные интересы. Мы так и будем делать. Well, if Mr. Putin uh, stops shooting right now and liberate all the territories, well, it could be one of well, one of the steps for negotiations. And then, for me also, the end of war, it's reparations. The plans of Russians uh, do not really be realized. We still, we, we continue to fight, we continue to work for this war to be ended uh, as we want it to. I don't know. I think everything is stupid. <laughs> and the war is stupid. I mean, <laughs> yeah, to Russians. Yeah, because I, I know that they have a lot of weapons, a lot of bombs. They can uh, bomb Ukraine every day through two years in a row, every day in a row. Yeah, but 
uh, what can we do? Yeah, we can protect ourselves. You know, it's really a difficult situation, and um, the fact that we are still alive, it's um, uh, hmm. yeah, it's um, uh, it's a, it's it's huge. It's huge.